What's up guys, it's Franchise923, and in this video I want to show you how you can use the Python that comes with QGIS to create shapefiles. So in the past couple of videos we've been making a shapefile from uh, basically a CSV file, and we've been using uh, ArcPy which comes with ArcGIS. Um, but what if you don't have ArcGIS? Um, I'm just going to show you some alternative ways to do it. Um, and we're going to start with the QGIS way. So. Uh, Let's actually make a new Python file here. Let's just call it QGIS shapefile. And I'm basically going to copy all this in because the bulk of it's going to be the same. And let's get rid of ArcPy. We don't need this. Don't need this. Don't need all this. All right, so the next thing, if you don't have QGIS downloaded, um, you should go ahead and download that. And how I do that, you just go to QGIS. And I usually download the OSGO network installer instead of the standalone installer because when you download the OSGO, it comes with this um, OSGO shell, which is very useful. Um, for you like doing geospatial stuff, but it's up to you. You can download this one as well, um, but I would recommend downloading this one. And then what we have to do is now that once we have it downloaded, we have to find where that Python is. So if you look, since I downloaded it using the network installer, it's in this directory here, this OSG of four windows 64. And if you go into apps and Python, this is where the actual Python is, but in order to get it to work outside of QGIS, we have to run this batch script. Um, so let me show you where that is. So if you go into bin and go all the way down to Python, Python something, Python QGIS bat, this is what you actually have to point PyCharm to in order to get it to work. So this is basically just setting some environment variables uh, so it knows where all the libraries are. Um, so Let's configure PyCharm to be able to use that Python. So you can actually just um, input that bat file right here as the executable, which I didn't know you could do until today, but <laughs> apparently you can do it. So just click OK. And cool, it recognizes all the libraries. And just click OK. And now we should be good to go. So it's telling me that's my Python. So the next question is, how can we do this using the Python with QGIS? So let's just Google. Um, actually, there's this thing called Python GDAL OGR cookbook, which kind of has a lot of shortcuts. And this is where I, uh, I found the code to do this. So I'm going to click on vector layers here. And so if you don't know OGR and GDAL, GDAL is sort of for raster data and OGR is for uh, feature or point vector data. Um, so we need to look at OGR stuff for basically creating a shape file. So um, here we go, create a new shape file and add data. So this is exactly what we want to do. And they're actually parsing a CSV file so we're going to use we're going to take advantage of this code so this is all the code we need we don't actually need all of it but we're just going to copy it in now and i'm just going to paste it in here and let's just see what we can do to make this work so that's good we actually don't need this stuff because we have our own text file we're working with um, so let's just go like line by line through here so this is something that's setting up an Esri shape file. So this is creating a shape file. So we need to give it a directory here. So let's just um, put it right there. So just go ahead and put a directory here. So that's where the shape file is going to get created. This is just adding the spatial reference. So we don't need all of this. So this is creating a layer. So um, <clears throat> it's just how they do it with this library. So 
I'm not gonna, so now it's creating fields, so we're not interested in elevation. We don't need that. Um, region, we don't need, so I'm gonna get rid of those two lines, these three lines actually. Just trying to keep it simple. So we're giving it a field name, giving it a width, and now we're creating, actually creating it. And now we're uh, creating a lat long. All right, so here's where the actual good stuff happens. So you notice we're we're going into a loop here, and this loop is very similar to the loop we had down here where we're looping through the CSV. So we're actually gonna take all of this right here and put it into our for loop. So let me get rid of their for loop and bring it into our for loop. And I'm just gonna put it at the end of the for loop here. Because basically we need to do something with every single point. So um, before I forget, let's move this down to right here. And I don't need to print the coordinate list anymore. I actually don't even need a coordinate list. Okay, so we don't need region. We don't need elevation. All right. So what it's doing is it's basically we're, let's uh hmm, let's change this field instead of name let's call it heart rate because if you remember we're looping through and um, we're getting the heart rate value from that Garmin CSV. So you can kind of see what's going on here. We're creating a feature every time we loop through. We're creating a feature setting and we're setting the fields so um what it's doing it's we're basically we're putting the latitude longitude in what's called well-known text this wkt and that's it's kind of um it's a way that everyone is familiar with um latitude not latitude longitude but it's just it's a way we can use text to create geometries um, and that's what's happening. So we need to change these values because if you remember, this is from the example they gave and they just, they actually happened to name it row just like we did. <laughs> that's just a coincidence, but we need heart rate to be um, just that heart rate variable we set up earlier. And latitude is going to be, um, let's see here. Position lat degrees. This is going to be position long degrees. So this is actually a little confusing. So here we're set, it says set the attributes using the values from the delimited text file. So we're setting the field values, but down here we're creating a well known text and using the well known text to create the geometry. So there's a little bit of a disconnect there, but. Um, they're kind of using this old way of doing string formatting. So I'm just going to get rid of all of this. Basically, we're, we just need to create this string here. So I'm going to put an F in front of it and we're going to make an F string. So let's just Google real fast. Um, Well-known text point example. So I can show you like what we're trying to construct. So this is an example of well-known text, this value here. So we need to make it look just like this, exactly like this. So point and then two values inside parentheses with no space in between or no comma. Um, so if you see, that's what we have here. I'm going to put a space there. And in here, I'm going to put the two variables, um, no comma, no space there. And we just need, the position long and then position lat <clears throat> and then that looks good I actually don't know if this space is necessary let's just keep it and see if it works all right um, I think we're looking pretty good shape here um, let's just call this Garmin points 
Garmin points. All right, let's give it. Let's give it a try. Okay, corrupt data invalid and so something's I'm guessing wrong with the well-known text. So I'm gonna get rid of this space here. Actually, I have a feeling we don't need that. So we see it created the shape file, which is good. No, something is not correct with that. I think, let me look at this. I think we need a space here. See, it's very, very finicky. So actually let's print the value of well-known text. You see, like I switched between the, the string formatting and the F strings. It's just because I'm still used to the formatting, but I'm trying to get more into F strings. Um, but yeah, let's run this again. Make sure I delete the shape file here. Now you think, I think I named this not the same as when I defined it up here. Let's try that. All right, let's try this again. Okay, there we go. So every time it looped through, so we're, we're looping through our CSV file, getting the, remember we're converting the semicircles to decimal degrees. Then we're <clears throat> basically creating a well-known text point from it and then creating, adding it to the, the shape file. So let's have a look at that in pro and also we'll open up QGIS. All right, let's drag this new shape file in. All right, put it underneath everything. <laughs> All right, there it is. And let's open the attribute table and we should see heart rate and there's the heart rate value. So you could add whatever you wanted there, but that's basically how you do it with <clears throat> QGIS and, and their Python. Um, let's actually look at it in QGIS too. Cool. Um, so yeah, that's how you do it. Um, hope I didn't go too fast there, but I was kind of utilizing the code that we did <clears throat> in the last few videos. Really the hardest part to get all this working is um, understanding how you can get the Python from QGIS to work in PyCharm. That took me a while. And then um, how to format this well-known text. That is very finicky. You have to do it exactly like this. Um, but yeah, you can see it's a little bit... <clears throat> more involved to do it this way using OGR and OSR, which are the libraries that come with QGIS. But um, comp compared to ArcPy, I'm saying it's, it's uh, there's a little bit more code here, but you know, it works and it pretty much makes sense. Um, <clears throat> actually, a lot of commenting here. But yeah, hope that was helpful. Um, I think in the next video, I'm gonna show you how we can do it with another Python library called Shapely. And it's a lot, um, it's cleaner than all, all this code. So, um, yeah, I hope that was helpful. If you liked it, please, uh, like, and subscribe. Thanks.